Hi, welcome to Magic Movie Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the first part of a drama mini-series called, Clickbait. Please, do subscribe as a gift to support the channel. Let's get started. The beginning of the episode shows us Andrea Brewer's birthday party. Her family has gathered to celebrate the occasion. Her son Nick, daughter, Pia. Along with her Nick's wife Sophie get Andrea a birthday present. Pia is disappointed to see that the present is a planter when she had asked Sophie to get a bread maker instead. She makes snarky comments to Sophie about her ideas being lame. Nick gets mad at her for disrespecting his wife and asks her to leave the party immediately. Nick and Sophie's sons, Ethan and Kai look at the adults fighting in horror. Pia embarrassingly leaves and goes to a club. She drinks a lot and dances wildly to forget what happened earlier. Sometime later, she is in the club's bathroom, texting a man named Woody, who she matched on a dating app. She texts him to meet her but accidentally drops her phone in the toilet when she gets up to flush. In the following scene, she is in her apartment, putting her phone in rice so it would soak all the water and repair itself. The next day, she drives to the hospital where she works as a nurse. She is assisting a patient as he shows her interesting videos online to keep himself distracted. In one of the videos, Pia's brother Nick is holding up a card that says, I abuse women. He then holds up a different card that says, at 5 million views I die. He seems to be beaten and scared, as if someone is making him hold the signs. Pia is shocked and doesn't know what's going on. She rushes to the hospital's phone to call Nick but the call goes straight to voicemail. She then calls Nick's wife Sophie but she doesn't pick up either. Pia freaks out and rushes to Nick's work. She then asks his co-worker Matt about him. Matt claims that he hasn't seen him since the morning. Pia shows him the video which worries Matt, so he asks his other co-worker Dawn if she saw Nick. The two find out that he missed his 8 o'clock meeting and hasn't been to work yet. Pia is now more worried than ever, so she rushes to the school where Sophie teaches. She barges inside even when the guards warn her not to. Sophie gets rid of the guard and watches the video herself. She is as shocked as Pia to watch it. According to her, Nick left for work, as usual in the morning, so the video makes no sense. The two then go to the police to file a missing report. On their way, the views in Nick's video reaches 9,000 and proceeds to increase rapidly. The case is handled by a police detective named Roshan Armiri. The detective asks them several questions about Nick and focuses on the part about him assaulting women. Sophie calmly answers all his questions but Pia gets annoyed. She and Roshan seem to know each other but do not act on the fact. Sophie gets a call from her older son Ethan and goes back home to them. The boys are distressed to see the video of their father. Ethan is on his tablet trying to access the Find My Fam app which might show where Nick is. However, the app cannot find his location because his phone is turned off. The video has reached 300,000 views in just some hours and everyone in the comments is calling Nick a monster. Sophie tells the kids to not watch the video anymore and stop going to school for the time being. Pia returns back to her apartment to see that her phone is finally working. She finds a voicemail from Nick in which he apologizes for their fight the previous day and says there are things he needs to talk about with her. Pia plays the voicemail on repeat while driving to her mother Andrea's house. She asks Andrea if she has talked to Nick that day but Andrea says she hasn't. Pia opts to not tell her about the situation so she wouldn't worry. Just then, she gets a text from Sophie asking her to come to the police station. Immediately. There. The two find out that another video of Nick has been uploaded to the website. In this one, he holds a card that says, I killed a woman. Since, the case has turned to homicide. Detective Roshan's competitive colleague, Detective Zach DeLuca is added to investigate the case. After watching the video, Pia immediately recognizes that the first two signs were in Nick's handwriting, the third one is not. Luca believes that the video might be a confession and asks the women if Nick is known to be violent. An enraged Sophie tells him that Nick wouldn't hurt anyone, men or woman. Pia also retaliates saying Nick is the victim and the detective should do something. Before the video reaches 5 million views, when Sophie and Pia come out of the police station, Pia shows Sophie the voicemail she received and asks her if she should show it to the police, but Sophie wants to keep the mail on the low because Nick sounds apologetic in it, which wouldn't help their case as the police already suspect him to be a murderer. As they talk, Sophie gets a call from a journalist who wants to interview her. The two get more nervous because of the call. The video now has over a million and a half views. A nervous Pia goes to her computer genius friend. Vince and asks him to somehow find Nick's location. Vince says that finding out Nick's location is beyond his reach but he has created a subport where people from around the world are investigating Nick's case and helping to look for him. Pia doesn't believe that Amir 
Website can find her brother but appreciates the help anyway. After that she makes way to Nick's. Housen is approached by a reporter outside. Pia yells at her to stay out of the private property. And goes inside. A disappointed Andrea confronts her for keeping Nick's disappearance from her. She apologizes and checks up on Nick's son Ethan, who seems to be calm. And playing games at the time of crisis. When Pia goes back to her apartment, the video has. Made the news because of its popularity. Suddenly, her hacker friend Vince arrives with important. Information. The people in the subport have found out that the video was taken in a specific kind. Of delivery van by analyzing the symbols in the background. Pia thanks Vince and takes the proof. To the police. They begin to look for the specific van through the traffic cameras while Pia waits. Outside, accompanied by Nick's co-worker Matt. After a while, she refreshes the website and. Sees that the views have reached 5 million. Just then, Roshan and the officers come outside. Claiming that they have found the van. Everyone quickly rushes to the location with. A SWAT team, only to find that the van is empty. They search around the area but find nothing. At. Last, the police conclude that Nick was not in the van when it was disposed of. Back at the police. Station, Luca assigns tasks to all the officers involved in the case but excludes Roshan because. He is not from the homicide department, and his services are no longer needed. When Roshan tries. To retaliate, Luca asks him to accompany Sophie to her home. Outside her house, Sophie is mobbed. By the reporters. Roshan escorts her inside to see that the house is being investigated for evidence. Several police officers spread around looking for anything significant clue that they can find. The kids ask Sophie if Nick has been found and she assures them he will be back soon. Just then Luca arrives at the house and seizes all the family members' phones. So they can extract data that can potentially help them with the case. The family is skeptical about the procedure, saying that they are being treated as suspects. Everyone hands their phone except for Pia who says that hers is at her apartment because it is broken. Amidst the search, Pia goes out to smoke. Roshan follows her behind for a chat. As the two talk we find out that they have been chatting with each other through a dating app for a long time. In fact, before Pia's phone dropped in the toilet, she was planning to meet Roshan. She asks him to keep her on the loop with anything that happens with the case. However, Roshan reveals he has been removed from it because he is from the missing person department. He suggests Pia request the Sergan to put him on the case and Pia agrees. Later, Roshan is searching the house on his own. When he sees Ethan in his room with a tablet. Etten says that it was his father's old tablet. That no one uses anymore. Roshan still asks for it to see if it has something important. But Etten insists he needs it to monitor the search. He explains that Nick's case has grown. So popular that people have established an app called, Geonicking dedicated to his search. In the app, people go around areas in the city where Nick can potentially be found and search. For him. The areas that have already been searched are marked off the map in red. This piques Roshan's. Interest and he takes the tablet for himself. He then goes to the police station and shows. The app to the sergeant. But, she is not in the favor of involving the civilians in the search. Roshan also shows her the text messages that were extracted from Ethan's phone where he. Talks about a big fight between his parents. When Roshan walks outside of the sergeant's office. Detective Luca condescendingly asks him to go home. Roshan then makes his way to a site that. Hasn't been searched through Gionicking and finds two teenagers searching for Nick's body. With no progress, Roshan visits the mosque and then his home. His parents had seen him in the. News earlier and are proud of him for working in such a big case. They ask him when he is going to. Be promoted to the homicide department but Roshan dismisses the question. The following day, Sophie makes an official statement to the reporters. Asking Nick's kidnappers not to hurt him. Later, Pia asks Roshan to meet her alone in his car. And shows him the voice message Nick had left her before his disappearance. Roshan is annoyed at. Her for not providing them with the information sooner but Pia defends herself by saying they. Can go through her phone now. He asks her what problem Roshan wanted to talk to her about. But Pia doesn't know it either. Roshan then goes to the sergeant and tells her about the. Newfound information. He also comes clean of his relationship with Pia before Nick's disappearance. After that, he returns back to his desk, only to find the pictures from his dating profile. Pasted all over his station. Luca laughs at him for it. An enraged Roshan blames. Him for being discriminatory towards him because of his religion. But Luca claps. Back saying that Roshan is not a team player and is using this case to get promoted. The next day, Nick's bike is found by the side of a secluded road. The police rush there and. Investigate the scene. Soon. An empty syringe is found nearby. They conclude that it was used to. Kidnap Nick. After the investigation, Nick goes to Sophie's home and is received by her mother Ruby. 
He informs the family about Nick's bike being found and asks to speak to Sophie. In private. He asks her about Nick's voicemail to Pia to which she reveals about their fight the night prior. Then, Roshan inquires if Sophie and Nick were facing some marital issues before his disappearance. Sophie, unsettled by the question, claims that the status of their relationship has nothing to do with Nick's disappearance. Roshan gets suspicious and directly asks her if she knows where her husband is. Sophie looks at him in disbelief and asks him to get out of the house. Next, he goes to Pia's apartment to find her observing the Geonicking app. He asks her about her fight with Nick only to be dismissed. Eventually she tells them she and Nick are closer than most siblings but he had been acting differently for a few months. They got in a fight because she called him out on it. She also reveals that on March 16th, he came to her with bruises and told her to keep it a secret from Sophie. As they talk, the Gia Nicking app shows Nick's body has been found. Roshan and Pia quickly rush to the location where a crowd of people surround Nick's body. However, getting closer to it, they see that the body is just a mannequin, with Nick's face pasted on it as a joke. After the incident, Roshan drops Pia off at her apartment where Nick's co-worker Matt is waiting for her outside. She and Matt go inside as Roshan drives away. At night, the detective uses the Find My Fam app to look where Nick was on March 16th. He finds out he was at a bar and visits the owner the following day. While watching the CCTV footage, he sees that Nick had gotten into a fight with an unknown man that day. Later, he calls Pia to the police station and shows her the video of the fight. Pia sighs of relief that they finally have a lead and thanks Roshan for working hard on the case. After Pia leaves, Roshan presents his idea about the geonicking to Luca who dismisses him at first but agrees to go on a search anyway. They reach the woods by an abandoned road where Roshan finally finds Nick's decaying dead body in a nearby river. In the following scene, we see Roshan walk up to Pia in her apartment and inform her of the dead body being found. Even though Pia had anticipated this, she breaks down crying on the floor mourning her brother's death. The next day, Roshan is welcomed into the police station with applause. The sergeant promotes him to the homicide department and even Luca praises him for his good work. He then helps his co-worker to go through Sophie's socials. While working, Roshan notices a picture of Sophie with a man, who looks like the guy Nick got into a fight with at the bar. A surprised Roshan rechecks, and confirms that it is the same man. In the following scene, we see Sophie at the police station. Roshan officially informs her of her husband's death. She freezes on hearing the news and asks the detective how he died. Luca reveals that he had head trauma but the reason hasn't been confirmed yet. She sheds a single tear and asks them who was responsible. Luca then shows her the footage of Nick's fight with the men and asks Sophie if she knows him. To their surprise, she lies and says she doesn't. Then, she is shown a picture of them together. Sophie finally admits that the man is her former colleague named Curtis Hamilton. She claims they are just friends and co-workers but after her first lie, the detectives find it hard to believe. Later, she returns home and sits all of her family down. She finally reveals to the kids that their father is not returning home. All of them burst into tears, grieving Nick's death. Then, we see Pia at the police station demanding Roshan to let her see her brother's body. However, she is not allowed to see him until the post-mortem. Back in the house, Sophie tells her mother that she was inquired about Curtis by the police. When she reveals that she referred to him as just a friend, her mother looks at her in disbelief. It is clear that something was going on in between the two. Sophie cries saying that if Curtis is the one who killed Nick, it will be her fault. As they talk, Pia arrives at the house asking if she can sleep for the night. Sophie invites her but doesn't tell her anything about Curtis. Then, we are shown the flashback of Nick and Sophie's last wedding anniversary. They had a party that they enjoyed to the fullest. But by the end of it, Sophie received a text from Cordy's that said he cannot stop thinking about her. Sophie's demeanor changed after seeing the text. That night, she came clean about her three months long affair with Curtis. Nick was furious at her. Back in the present, Sophie sneaks out of the house and goes to see Curtis. He is shocked to see her but invites her in. He acknowledges everything happening in Sophie's life and asks her if she is fine. Sophie instead asks him why he met Nick without telling her. Curtis replies that. Nick messaged him out of the blue and asked him to meet at the bar. He wanted Curtis to tell him every detail of their relationship, who was interested first, when did they meet each other, and how many times they made love. He claims that by the end of the conversation, Nick attacked him. But Sophie is suspicious of him. As they talk, the police knock on his door and arrest Curtis. It turns out they had been following Sophie after she lied about her relationship earlier. 
Both Curtis and Sophie are then taken to the police station as suspects of Nick's murder. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like. To help the channel out. Thank you for watching.